All right, g'day, hi, and welcome. I don't know how long <laughs> I got left on my battery or on my camera. I just wanted to make a bunch of series on boating stuff today. I just had, had the inclination to do that. Okay, boat buying. What boats should you walk away from? Uh, in my buying boat buying experience, I've only owned two boats. This is the second one, a sailboat anyway. I walked away from... Before I bought this boat, uh, the first boat, I walked away from about three boats. For this boat, I probably, I don't know, eight, ten, I, 28 boats. I don't know how many boats I walked. I looked at a lot of boats. Uh, almost ready to buy. There were two that I was about to buy. Uh, one was a uh, Hughes 26 like this, except for when I first, the first time I saw it, we opened the hatch and the water was up to about here. <laughs> Needless to say, I did not buy that boat. The second time I saw it, there was no water left in it. But uh, yeah, I, I went back a week later just to see if I could get it for a song and a prayer. Like the guy wanted seven grand for it. And it was like, okay, yeah, dude, uh, there was brown water up to here in, in, in it. And it was just, he, he did sell it for 6,500. But I, I, I can't imagine the guy that bought it uh, knew that that boat got flooded out. There would be no way, that, uh, but I mean, these are good boats, but I mean, it's just that the underlying damage, you wouldn't know what it was, right? Um, there was another boat, a Tanzer 7.5. I, I, I even done the down payment on it, but I couldn't transfer the boat into my name. And uh, because the owner, she had it, and again, she was one of the, a lot of people think you just go, you buy a boat, you put it in the water and that's it. If you don't take it anywhere, you won't find out the hard way that you will have to pay taxes on it. You will find out the hard way that you may get to a, a customs and they may seize the boat on you because it's not titled to your name. And that'll be coming up basically as a a stolen boat. or you're, It's like driving somebody else's car without the paperwork. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's the same concept. Well, you got no insurance with you. You got no, you know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, it was a Tanzer 7.5. This thing was beyond mint it was so clean it was it was even nicer than what this was when i in its haiti when i got it this boat's still pretty nice don't get me wrong but this boat looked like it was a set tans or 7.5 it looked like it had just literally came off the the the, the production line you walked up to, like you walked up put your face near the the hull and it was just it was like looking at a, a mirror it was just everything on it was absolutely beyond stellar and the boat was 7500 bucks uh with a cradle and it was a beautiful beautiful little boat and i forget how many sails and all that but anyway i put 500 bucks down on it i said okay well the next thing i want to do she says okay go ahead put it in your name i went to put it in my name i went into canada customs or oceans and fisheries at the time and they said, sir, uh, we can't put this boat in your name. I said, what's the problem? I said, I already did the lien check on it. There was no lien on the boat. Always check a boat for a lien. You do this through your transport uh, ministry of transportation. In my case, Transport Canada. And they said, no liens on the boat. Okay. And I said, okay, that's fine. They said, that's not the problem. It says, the problem is, is that this boat, okay, is registered to somebody else. I'm like, well... The lady I was dealing with, I knew this lady did not steal somebody's boat. So I was like, oh, I said, well, okay. I said, I know the lady didn't steal the boat. You know, trust me, this is this lady. There'd be no way this lady stole the boat. So I said, I think probably what happened, she didn't know and whatever. I said, well, what do we have to do? You know, how, how do I make this boat? My, and, and we tried like days for, for a couple of days to get this boat into my name. So she had to track it back to the guy that she bought it from. Now, here's where it gets tricky. The guy she bought it from, okay, I can't remember how it worked out, is he did not transfer the boat into his name because he didn't want to pay the taxes on it. He left it into the other guy's name. So no problem, we'll just go to the previous guy, okay. But there was something that linked him to the boat, which meant he had to put the boat into his name to transfer it to her to transfer it to me. And we just couldn't get this. I don't remember what the details was. It was something It was something we couldn't leapfrog over that guy for some reason. And there was no way he was going to do it because he wasn't going to get stuck with the taxes, right? I mean, he, he was free and clear. But for some reason, there was something about the boat that linked to him and Oceans and Fisheries would not, would not let it go. So, uh, I... 
I told her, I said, well, I, I can't buy the boat. I said, because look, I might be taking this down to the Thousand Islands, uh, going, you know, to the Gananoque and all that stuff. And if I cross into the United States, I don't want to be, you know, go, uh, going into the gulag for a stolen boat or have, you know, uh, U.S. Customs or Canada Customs ding me for the taxes at the, well, I, I paid the taxes on it anyways, like 8% or whatever. Wasn't that, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but the point is I didn't want the boat seized on me because I, I did plan on doing some coastal traveling with it between Canada and the United States, which I may still do with this, which is no problem because this thing crossed the T's, dotted the I's. This thing is mine, 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 mine. Um, so yeah, that, I had to walk away from that boat. That was just one example. Um, other examples, there was a boat. I went on it and I used my little tool. Ding, 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 boom, boom, boom. There's freaking water in the deck and a big crack. And I saw the crack on it. The guy said, oh, yeah, you know, I'll sell it to you. It's a good deal. Uh, I should be charging you $2,500 $2, more for this boat, but I just got to get rid of it really quick. And I looked at it, and then when I went under the boat and I looked right at the keel, it was a, a Kirby 25, which I really wanted because it was a very fast race boat. Uh, and I looked at it. It was just crazing the whole way around the mast step. It was crazing. The deck was just, a, it was a nightmare. I could tell it had been painted over, but I could see, you know, you could see that there was webbing, so it wouldn't have passed the survey. And uh, I remember the surveyor I saw, I got off the boat. The other guy went home. He goes, you, did you just buy that? I said, no. He goes, he says, don't buy it. He says, uh, he goes, he says, I'm not telling you not to buy it, but he says, I would never pass that. He says, that boat has deck damage. He says, you're looking at 10 grand just to redo that freaking uh, deck. You know what I mean? Maybe not 10 grand, but you get the idea. Um, and then, of course, all the crazing. And that's one of the things, like, if you do uh, ever get a chance to talk to a marine surveyor, Talk to the most anal marine surveyor you possibly can. The guy that will not pass anything. Because then if you can make him happy, there's no. you can do your own surveys. And I can do my own survey to a good degree. Burnhams, leakums, and sinkums. Um, and I've talked to quite a few marine surveyors and stuff like that. And I always pick up little tips and tricks and stuff like that. And a lot of these guys, they'll just tell you, you know. Uh, some guys are uh, a little bit finicky about divulging the secrets of what they will and won't pass but most of the stuff is common sense but a lot of people if they have no experience with fire glass or uh wood that is constantly soaked in water um some boats can be really tricky to tell if they'd be seaworthy or not whether you should walk away from them but if the boat doesn't have the survey uh this boat has a survey and you have to survey a boat i believe every 10 years so if i want to put this boat back in the water at most marine uh most yacht clubs yacht clubs i have to do a bit of work to this before it would pass the survey again um look what is required in a marine survey uh you know what does it have to have it has to have the safety equipment okay that's no problem that has nothing to do with the boat that's just a matter of going buying the safety equipment okay well burnums leakums and sinkums uh the chain plates the uh through hulls the uh windows all that stuff uh if you got it if you got to clean it up clean it up uh, if you got to repatch it, you got to repatch it. So some boats, if let's say you got a survey and there's like a year and a half left on the survey, well, would that boat pass the survey the second time around? If the answer is no, walk away from the boat, uh, or get a better price so that you can fix the problems before you have to resurvey it. Because this happens to people all the time. They get a boat, they're out on a mooring. Suddenly the uh, harbor master comes up to them and says, "You have to take that boat out of here because." That boat will not, it, it can't be insured. Therefore, it's a liability for our yacht club. And you have to take that boat out of here. You'll hear horror stories of that. And that's what the cheap boats for a dollar type of thing get you. Uh, a lot of times is, is uh, those boats, those really, you know, really bargain boats. They usually need a lot of work. They're, they're a low price for a reason. So if you've got a boat that's, you know, worth five, six thousand dollars $6,000. And you got to put 18000 bucks to get it up the code. I mean... You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, 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 you know, I mean, unless you really love that boat. When do you say when? Um, selling a boat, uh, buying a boat. I, I'm the type of guy that if somebody bought my boat, I'd tell them exactly what they were going to have to do. And I would tell them, you know, get it surveyed. If you're going to spend, the problem is, is like a survey on, let's say it's 20 bucks a foot. So this is going to cost you $520 or 10 bucks a foot. 260 bucks to uh, survey this boat, maybe 300, 400, whatever. If you find a guy that does it for 150 bucks, he does it for 150 bucks, whatever. Some are by the foot, you shop around. Uh, but you, 
if you're going to spend out, if you really believe it is a boat that's going to be worthy, um, do your lien check first uh, to make sure that the bank doesn't own this boat because it'd be nothing wor worse than buying a dream boat that's perfect in every way except for the fact that the bank comes and seizes it on you because some the, the lien is against the person, not the actual item. But this is an asset of that person. Therefore, it can be seized the same as a house, a car, an RV, you name it. Boats, all that stuff. So check for a lien check. Uh, if you can get the boat surveyed and if the sur surveyor says it's a go, uh, you know, with recommendations of what to, you know, get ready for the next survey, XYZ, seven years or 10 years, whatever your surveyor is, uh, is then go with that. Uh, if you're going to survey yourself, understand there's a risk to that. Uh, you might miss something that other guys won't, uh, and that could cost you a lot. So just, you know, especially when you start getting into the really, really big boats, because the bigger the boat, the more expensive they get. Anyway, I'll leave that at that. So that's just, just my, my little take there.